Hello everyone, very early good morning here from just outside Masai Mara in Kenya. So I actually slept really, really well last night, but the funny thing is that there are only controlled hours for the electricity. So the lights all turn on right around 5.30 a.m. and then they go off right at 10 p.m. So it feels a bit like what I imagine prison to be like. It's like you better wake up at 5.30, get your breakfast by 5.45, and then get out of here by 6.20, and then you better go to bed by 10 p.m. because we're turning off the generators. <laughs> So it's about 5.45 right now. I just took a shower. I uh, brushed my teeth. I'm getting all ready, packing up my bag to head out for our full day of game drives today in the park. So I'm just about to step out to the cafeteria to go get breakfast, and then we're gonna be heading out. The thing is, it is a bit cold. So I'm probably gonna pull out my Patagonia to layer over the sweater. And then, yeah, in general, I think vlogging these game drives are really really boring they don't really translate well to a vlog because essentially all it is is you're sitting down in a car and watching animals go by there's a certain suspense when you're obviously there but that doesn't translate well over to the vlog that's why i haven't been vlogging much uh, in real time but um who knows if there's anything worth vlogging in terms of a narrative today sure i'll vlog if not you're going to just see some footage of cute animals appended to this video um, alongside what you've seen yesterday. But with that, have a great day. I hope you guys are having a good morning. I'm going to go step in and get some coffee before it's all gone. <laughs> drive this is the largest game drive of my three days here in Masai Mara and it was incredible we saw four of the big five and that means I got to see all three of the big cats as well the lions both male and female got to see a cheetah and the coveted leopard as well so it was incredible however I'm not gonna pretend that any of the photos and videos that I've been taking are worth your time watching because unless you are a National Geographic photographer or videographer they will not be literally everyone will have the same photos the same videos and I'm pretty sure you, you can all google image search a lion and see what a lion looks like that being said I still want to create a piece of content that is useful for you all the viewers in terms of having your own budget solo safari experience here in Kenya and so I'm gonna be sharing a couple tips and then in the b-roll I'll throw in some footage of some of the cool animal encounters you can have here in Masai Mara. Now the first tip starts with selecting your tour provider and this is gonna be a general series of tips because I want it to be applicable regardless of which platform you're looking at regardless of which language you're looking for regardless of the time of year and also regardless of which companies are available when you are booking and the first tip is to make sure that you know what's included and what's not included the primary inclusion that you need to make sure is included is the actual entrance tickets to the parks because those cost a lot of money and depending on how long you're planning on staying in the park and your nationality it can be up to 80 to 100 dollars so if that's not included in the in the actual overall price of your safari then that might actually then that might actually be indicative of why your safari is being sold at a much cheaper price than its competitors. The next factor to keep in mind is exactly which kind of vehicle you're going to be using for your safari because if you're taking a two or three day safari that means you're going to be spending about 20 maybe even 30 hours inside that vehicle so you want to make sure it's comfortable that it uh, is appropriate that it is appropriately able to fit the number of people who might be on your tour so that's also something you want to make sure you're aware of and make sure you are going for a 4x4 vehicle you do not want the white vans which are 
sort of like the typical minivan buses that you will have seen throughout my videos in Africa, you want to make sure that you have a 4x4 Land Cruiser or a Jeep or some sort of good off-road vehicle because you're going to be spending the vast majority of your time off land. Even in a good sturdy Toyota Land Cruiser, you feel like you are being tossed around for the 11 hours of the entire game ride. So that's something to keep in mind. Make sure you go for the vehicle of a higher quality. It's worth paying a little bit extra for. On that note, do be ready to be tossed around for many hours at a time. It's not only for the game drive, uh, the roads leaving Nairobi seem to be amazing, but as you leave Narok, which is the final city and gateway to the park, the roads condition will quickly, quickly deteriorate and you'll be spending the last about two, two and a half hours of your drive from Nairobi on really, really bad roads if there exist roads at all. So do whatever you need to do to make that an enjoyable ride for you. If it means distracting yourself with AirPods and music, do that. If that means that you need to take your Dramamine or other motion sickness medicine uh, about an hour before you start driving, make sure you have that on hand. So you can take it about three hours or three or four hours into the drive from Nairobi. So you have it an hour before you actually hit um, before you actually hit the the tough roads and also if you need to buy any of that medication which is prescription strength you can definitely get that over the counter um, with whichever generic name is available here in Kenya however I haven't taken anything on this ride and I've been good but I know that might not be the case for some people especially with the Sun or if you're sensitive to the cold and then also are being thrown around in a vehicle for this long it can get quite tough my next set of tips has to do with packing and what sort of equipment you want to bring. Firstly is clothing. Everyone says to avoid um, dark color clothes like blue or black. I found it to be okay. I mean, you're mostly in a vehicle for a good majority of the time, so you're not affected by all the different bugs and everything that might um, impact you if you're on the ground and hiking or the like. Uh, but just make sure you are layering because in the morning that means everything every time from when you wake up and when you leave for your day long uh, game drive until about like 9 or 10 in the morning it's going to be pretty cold so you want to layer have something the equivalent of the Patagonian nano puff jacket and then layer like something thin like a cardigan like this one and then have your base layer tee under that and then you can just adjust as the temperature rises midday and then falls again just before sunset and into the night. Similarly, as I mentioned, into the night, if you're staying at a budget camp like this one, it means you're gonna have a tent like this, which is more exposed to the temperature and the elements than a typical lodge might be. So it's gonna be cold in here at night and into the morning, regardless of how many layers of comforters and blankets are available here, which there are plenty. But when you step out, or when you need to take a shower, or when you're in bed, or need to get up, go out for breakfast, you're gonna be pretty cold. So make sure you have that something equivalent to that Nano Puff jacket, uh, it's definitely a must. Also, in terms of the weather, if you're coming from Nairobi, you're gonna notice that it's much warmer here than it is in Nairobi during the day. You're losing altitude and you get more of the grassland kind of savanna weather here, which is warm, hot, sunny. As you know, there's no shade if you're outside. And if you're sitting in a vehicle all day, chances are you're gonna be by a window. And that's by design, obviously, because you want a view of what's going on outside. But that also means you're gonna get direct sunlight on you all day. If you are seeking to tan, then dress accordingly. If you are seeking to protect yourself from sunlight and UV rays and all the like, make sure you have your sunscreen with you or wear long sleeves like I am. And again, you can layer that and remove it when it becomes unnecessary or unwanted. You also want to make sure that you bring um, moisturizer. If you're coming from a humid climate, for example, if you're along the coast in Mombasa and then making your way for your safari, you're going to be noticing a big change in the humidity or lack thereof. So you're going to find the weather here dry. And if you're not hydrating uh, and if you're not used to the drier weather, that might be tough. So make sure you have moisturizer and then also sunscreen because as I said you're going to be exposed to the sun quite a bit even if though you are inside you're going to be getting those sun rays from the windows and also the safari vehicles have those ceilings which pop up so you can step up and uh, get that 360 view of the landscape around you however that also means you're going to be exposed to the direct sunlight 
Moving on to electronics, that's a really, really important one here because if you're staying in a budget camp like this one, that means you will not be having access to the electricity and power outlets 24 seven. You're probably going to be having access to electricity in the morning before you head out. But that's really early morning before you head out. And also in the evening when you come back into the night before you go to bed. So my biggest, biggest recommendation is make sure you bring power banks with you. Don't alter whatever setup you have for your actual electronics. Obviously it's not worth it for a two or three days so far to completely change what sort of electronics you bring. However, you want to bring power banks because all the charging is going to be done in a communal area, not in your private tent next to your bed. So if you want to leave electronics to be charging while you're asleep or while you're eating or while you're in your tent, I'd rather leave my power banks there in a communal area. Even if those get stolen, it's going to be a lot less of a concern than if my camera, my GoPro, or my phone uh, gets stolen itself while charging. At least I know with a little bit more peace of mind, I can leave my power banks to sit there. I can go off, do my own thing, or let my gaze wander a little bit and not be concerned about, okay, who's going to steal my phone? Who's going to steal my camera? I can then take my power banks at night and then charge my own stuff on my own time or even while I'm out on the safari drive. Next reminder, which I'm sure you'll actually think about when you're here, but it might escape you. It's actually strange because when you're here in Masai Mara, regardless of how deep you are into the National Reserve, you will get data. I know Safaricom is the provider whose SIM card I've bought here. I get service throughout the park. And that's a great thing for quickly checking on messages or updates or any information you need right on hand. However, the downside is that it will drain your phone battery like nothing else. So right with everything that I've told you about how charging and electricity is not directly on demand at all hours of the day, you don't want to find yourself in a difficult situation without having the right amount of charge uh, for your electronics at a certain hour. So just make sure you always have your phone on airplane mode when you are here, and then you can just turn the airplane mode off for when you need to quickly check something and then turn it right back on. With that, I've only had to barely even charge my phone over the past two days. And second to last recommendation, though there are, though I'm sure there are many, many more, and if you have any other recommendations after you've done your own budget solo, uh, safari, make sure you leave them in the comments section below. But this recommendation is all about snacks. If you're someone who gets hangry, if you're someone who gets anxious like I do, then make sure you get snacks. Uh, your guide might remind you of this when you make a stop at Narok, almost 100% with all certainty. You probably will be making a stop of some sort, whether it's for refueling, whether it's for uh, going to the bathroom or whatever in Narok, which is the final real city with all the amenities before you uh, make a turn and then head down the, the dirt roads toward the park. Uh, make sure you stock up on snacks there because as I said, I had no idea that these drives would be lasting up to 11 hours and during that time if the meal times do not line up with exactly when you're feeling hungry, anxious, hang <laughs> hangry, hungry, hangry, hungry, anxious, all of the above then that's not going to be fun and you're just going to not be able to appreciate all the majestic nature going on around you. So make sure you bring nuts, make sure you bring like chips, uh, whatever it is that makes you happy and, um, in, and lets you enjoy yourself when you're in such a beautiful place. But get those in Narok because you're not going to find any of that here right outside uh, the Masai Mara Park. And my last insider tidbit and it's a bit ironic that I'm sharing this one with you because I'm right here on camera in front of all of you but just take some time away from the lens take put your phone down put your camera down uh, and just take it all in with your actual human eyes and that's something that's so hard to say because I completely know how it is to be enveloped by wanting to capture every single detail, every single moment on camera. I mean, that's kind of what nonstop Nikhil is, but even I have stopped with the vlogging. I mean, it's not going to be interesting for another person to watch it. It's all about you, something that's special for you and your own experience that you want to capture. But at the same time, I mean, like I told you before, it's only a real National Geographic photographer who's going to really capture something great on video or on film 
um, while on these rides, you know, everyone's going to be trying to vie for that same shot. There's going to be other vehicles getting in the way. It's the whole Instagram versus reality thing. If you're actually near an animal that is highly coveted and on that big five list, chances are there's going to be at least like five to 15 other vehicles just like you, full of travelers trying to capture that perfect shot. And chances are you're not going to get it, especially not on an iPhone or any other uh, typical camera you might have. Even if you have the greatest camera, you probably will not capture that beautiful shot that everybody wants to see. The thing is, it's only going to be important for you. So sure, take some shots. I've captured some shots as well, and I've shared them in the B-roll of this video, but don't make your whole experience about that. At some point, just put your phone down, look out the window, look at all the windows around you, and just take it all in and just let it be thought provoking because I know I've shared some thoughts which occurred to me in the last video after yesterday evening's drive and that's exactly the magic of the safari experience it's not getting the shot because we all we all know what a zebra looks like we all know what a giraffe looks like I can google image a leopard any day but it's what we take away from this experience which remains within us which shapes our way of thinking, which shapes our way of relating to other peoples, other cultures, and to animals themselves, which really make this safari experience so, so incredible. And with that, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed these tidbits coming from me personally after having taken a budget safari as a solo traveler here in Masai Mara, and I never came to Kenya or East Africa intending to do a safari. This is something I planned just over the past few days before embarking on this trip and I really really enjoyed it and I want to thank everybody along the way who told me that it's really a worthwhile experience that I must take. Even if wildlife is not my primary interest here traveling on the continent of Africa, it's been so much more than that. It's helped me relate to humanity, to our earth, and to just general being and myself. So with that, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to go ahead over to the restaurant tent to grab a drink and relax for a little bit. But with that, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed some of this footage, regardless of how mediocre it is. But with that, I'm going to say goodbye and I'll meet you all tomorrow, perhaps back in Nairobi or perhaps in the morning for another short game drive. But with that, take care, everyone. Have a good night. Bye. Wow.